today on Rapplin. President Aquino says Senator Trillanes is still the Philippines' backdoor negotiator in its territorial dispute with China. Senator Gingona wants to repeal a law that punishes online libel, saying it is a blow to free speech. And the author of books on martial law says the evils of the era are back with a vengeance. Hello, I'm Ayi Makaraig, sitting in for Maria Ressa. Welcome to Rappler, your social news network. President Benigno Aquino III says Senator Antonio Trillanes IV is still a backdoor negotiator with China in the territorial dispute over Scarborough Shoal. An ally and friend of the president, Trillanes will reportedly be part of the administration's senatorial slate for the May 2013 elections, Trillanes earlier said Executive Secretary Paquito Ochoa Jr. tapped him to help address the conflict with China. But Aquino says it was the senator who volunteered. Aquino does not explain why he took up Trillanes' offer, despite questions about the senator's lack of background on foreign affairs. Trillanes is a former Navy officer who launched coup attempts against the Arroyo administration before becoming a senator in 2007. Aquino says Trillanes achieved minor success in his talks with China, like helping reduce the number of Chinese vessels in Scarborough Shoal. Medyo nag-aalanganin na kung sabihin lahat ng detalye. Dahil nga pag informal, pag, pag, pag informal nito, hindi pwede sabihin publicly sa China. Meron din silang consideration sa pag-address ng kanilang constituencies. So hindi ko pwede ibigay sa inyo natin ang detalye, pero mukhang napakaliwanag no? na humupa naman ng maski pa paano yung intention dyan at nakatulong sa ito as the Philippines marks the 40th year since late dictator Ferdinand Marcos declared martial law, Filipinos protest a newly passed law that punishes online libel. On September 12, President Aquino signed the Cyber Crime Prevention Act, which makes online libel a criminal offense with a stiffer penalty than that for ordinary libel. But lawyer Harry Roque says the law extends the violation of the freedom of expression to the internet, which he calls a free marketplace of ideas. He says he and other critics will bring Aquino to court over this law. He says there can be nothing sadder than suing the son of icons of democracy for infringement of a cherished right. In an interview with Rappler, CNN Beijing Bureau Chief Jaime Flor Cruz stresses the, stresses the importance of social media in protecting freedom of speech. With the, with the tools we have now, mm -hmm. The internet, the social media networks, perhaps I think it will be harder now for uh, a reimposition or a return of a martial law rule. Why? Because information is, is better um, and more easily shared. Um, it's no longer uh, a monopoly of the mainstream media. It's everyone, everyone with a cell phone, a mobile phone, can be a, a reporter, mm -hmm. as, as, you know, a citizen reporter. And that's what makes it difficult for, for dictators, for um, any oppressive uh, regimes to at least to uh, subsist. No? They, may, they may be able to exist for a while, but eventually they'll find it harder and harder to control the minds and therefore to control the system. Senator Teofisto Gingona III wants to repeal parts of the Cybercrime Prevention Act, saying some provisions are unconstitutional. In a statement, Gingona says it is problematic to transplant the revised penal code definition of libel to the internet without specifying who is liable. He says website owners will be forced to lock down their sites and prevent people from commenting. He adds, quote, people will now be afraid to express themselves on the internet. This is a big blow to our democracy. On September 21st, 40 years ago, President Ferdinand Marcos declared martial law. 
For almost 13 and a half years, the country suffered from a brutal and corrupt dictatorship. Historian Alfred McCoy says under martial law, 3,257 were summarily executed, 35,000 tortured, and 70,000 incarcerated. Marcos rated number two in Transparency International's list of the world's most corrupt rulers. Marcos is believed to have plundered $5 to $10 billion from the government's coffers. Nathan Gilbert Kimpo, political science professor and author of The Left in the Philippines After Marcos and co-author of Subversive Lives, a family memoir of the Marcos years, writes in a Rappler thought leader's piece called The Ghosts of Martial Law. He says many of the evils of the martial law era stayed on or, com or came back with a vengeance. Kimpo says there are no safeguards to prevent presidents from using patronage resources like pork barrel for self-serving ants. Kimpo also says the possibility of corruption and plunder remains. He cites two case studies, former presidents Joseph Estrada and Gloria Arroyo, saying they followed in Marcus's footsteps. In just two and a half years, Estrada allegedly amassed $78 to $80 million, enough to put him on the 10th spot in Transparency International's list of the most corrupt rulers. A Pulse Asia survey in late 2007 showed Filipinos regarded Arroyo as the country's most corrupt president, surpassing Estrada and even Marcos. Kimpo says political clans became even more entrenched despite the constitutional ban on political dynasties. He says instead of passing a law to enable this ban, post-Marcos legislators have been much too busy building and expanding their own dynasties. Other ghosts of martial law, according to Kimpo, are crony capitalism with Estrada's midnight cabinet and the oligarchs close to Arroyo as example, warlords and private armies, perversion of political institutions, personality-based political parties which perpetuate turncoatism, electoral fraud and violence, virtual land reform, referring to a land reform that is, quote, more virtual than real, extrajudicial killings and disappearances, and separatism and communist insurgency. The Presidential Commission on Good Government wants to exhibit former First Lady Imelda Marcos's fabulous jewels from martial law days. Carlos Santa Maria reports the treasure trove will be a lesson in history. I love you. I need you. I miss you. 26 years ago, Ferdinand and Imelda Marcos fled the Philippines to Hawaii carrying suitcases of jewelry. The U.S. government seized the jewels along with gold bars, all ill-gotten wealth, and returned these to the Philippine government, which has since been trying to put them on display before putting them up for sale. The planned exhibit never pushed through, but now times have changed. So far as the current Aquino administration um, has always trumpeted that it is for transparency and for accountability, then any exhibit of this sort, so long as the messaging comes across, is for me um, appropriate for the times. The Presidential Commission for Good Government, established in 1986 to recover assets plundered by Marcos, says the jewels are a lesson in history. We're not looking to exhibit the Marcos jewelry as a Philippine version of, of you know, the crown jewels or anything like that. Um, but we're looking at it to convey historical lessons. The fact that these were assets which were products of plunder, products of ill-gotten wealth. The commission proposes to hold the exhibit at the National Museum before the end of the year or early 2013. But will the Marcoses approve? The commission says the family is open to the idea. There has been to a certain extent indications that they are not averse to any exhibit, but so far as I Personally, I'm concerned uh, whether or not they're averse to the exhibit or whether or not um, they approve of it should not enter the equation in our decision-making process. After years of talking about it, the exhibit may actually push through. The Commission believes an event like this can convey the right message, especially to the youth that did not experience people power. Carlos Santa Maria, Rappler, Manila. Former President Arroyo is not recovering from her spinal condition despite undergoing stem cell treatment and other procedures. On her official Twitter account, Arroyo says she is suffering from a numb and shooting pain near her neck. She says her doctors advised her to wear her neck brace for longer periods of time to cope with the pain. 
A recent CT scan shows her neck muscles have atrophied due to her spinal condition. Arroyo still has physical therapy sessions three times a week at the Veterans Memorial Medical Center, where she spent eight months in hospital arrest for electoral sabotage charges. Mobile giants Globe Telecom and Smart Communications lash out at each other over the results of a network benchmark test by the National Telecommunications Commission. In their press releases, both Globe and Smart claim they outperformed the other. Smart rates slightly higher than Globe in four out of five parameters, drop call rates, average received signal level, average signal quality, and call setup time. But Globe outperforms Smart when it comes to block call rates or grade of service. In this parameter, the difference between the performance of the two networks is big, 4.45% for Globe and 9.95% for Smart. The Department of Public Works and Highways says flooding will still continue in parts of Metro Manila despite a 351 billion peso flood control master plan. DPWH Secretary Rogelio Singson says the master plan which will be implemented until 2030 will reduce flooding by over 70%. But he says Metro Manila will not be flood-free because of its many natural catchment areas, which experience floods even with little rainfall. These include San Juan, Espana, Araneta Avenue, Boni, and Rotonda areas. To alleviate flooding, Singson says the government must clear waterways of garbage and create new drainage systems. On the weather now, Pagasa says Tropical Storm Lawin, international name Jellowat, intensifies and continues to move slowly west towards southern Luzon. It was estimated at 560 kilometers east of Katarman, northern Samar. Public storm warning signal number one is raised over eastern Samar. Moderate to heavy rainfall is expected within the 600 kilometer diameter of the tropical storm. In sports, the Smart Gilas Pilipinas team loses to Iran after a dismal play in the final period of their semi-final match in the fourth FIBA Asia Cup. At the end of the third quarter, the Philippine team was down by just eight points, but Iran went on an 8 to nothing run at the start of the fourth quarter to extend their lead to 15 points. Gila still has a chance for an outright berth in the 2013 FIBA Asia Championship if they win the battle for the third match against Qatar. Let's now look at Rappler's Trap for today, a list of the 10 most important events around the world you shouldn't miss. At number 1, riots which began on September 11 continue 11 days later. Protests spread to more than 20 countries in the following days, killing more than 30 people including U.S. Ambassador to Libya, Christopher Stevens. Western embassies and consulates are closing in many parts of the Muslim word, world in, in anticipation of more protests after Friday prayers. Triggered by the anti-Islam movie Innocence of Muslims and cartoons published in a French magazine, demonstrations continue Thursday in Pakistan, Afghanistan, and Iran. At number two, the U.S. State Department wants to make sure Muslims around the world understand that anti-Islam movie does not represent the views of the U.S. government nor those of ordinary Americans. It wants to stress this particularly in Pakistan where Osama bin Laden was killed. The department buys ads on Pakistani TV stations and pushes out ads on YouTube to try to quell the anger. At number three, a U.S. official tells a congressional hearing Ambassador Stevens was worried about being on an Al-Qaeda hit list. Stevens and three other Americans were killed in a deadly attack on a U.S. consulate in Benghazi, Libya. It is the first time a U.S. ambassador has been killed since 1979. The U.S. now calls the attack in Libya a terrorist attack. At number four, scientists warn the Arctic Sea is melting at faster rates and it will have wide-ranging effects on climate change. A National Snow and Ice Data Center scientist says the Arctic is the Earth's air conditioner. The low point for 2012 was reached Sunday when the sea ice covered just 24% of the surface of the Arctic Ocean. Scientists say this will have large climate effects. And at number 8, a new software update released by iPhone Wednesday replaces Google Maps with Apple's new mapping system. 
there are many improvements, like colors are better and now voice-activated Siri can actually give you directions to where you want to go. Except many are up in arms because the new maps just aren't as robust as Google Maps, which has been tested since 2007. And at number 10, in a very meta situation, a video published on a North Korean government website uses pop imagery from a successful South Korean rapper who popularized Gangnam Style to make fun of a South Korean presidential candidate. The North Korean video shows a person dancing Gangnam Style, except the face imposed on the dancer is Park Gwen Hae, the candidate for the, gov for the governing New Frontier Party in the upcoming South presidential election. For the full top 10, visit Rappler.com's The Rap. Facebook revamps its offer service by making companies pay $5 per ad for promotion in the social network. The program is a new revenue opportunity for Facebook and a venue for merchants to advertise deals. Facebook says the program will help people find relevant offers in their local area. In August, Facebook shut down a product called Facebook Deals, which is designed to encourage group buying sim similar to Groupon. Facebook's new service will be available to all companies with more than 400 fans. Now let's take a look at Rappler's Mood Navigator. So if you see the dominant mood for today and in past days is angry, mostly fueled by stories on the Cybercrime Prevention Act, you have 81% angry on the thought leader's piece by lawyer Harry Roque saying, see you in court, Pinoy, over this law. And still on the same topic that was about the signing of this bill into law, 80% angry. And also anger over still the story on Senator Trillanes and Senate President Enrile over China. 42% angry and still other China-related topics. But if you see, it's actually a mixed bag. There are also stories where people are inspired, like our Talk Thursday interview with Jaza, Brave New Philippines, 66% inspired, as well as martial law and stifled freedoms, uh, uniquely enough, ironically, 46% inspired. And also an RH Bill piece, on Senator Legarda, still unclear stance on this bill, 56% amused. That's Rappler's newscast for today, Friday, September 21, 2012. Visit rappler.com and watch your newscast Monday to Friday. Tell us how you feel on our mood meter. I'm Ayi Makaraig, and as we say at Rappler, tomorrow begins today. We leave you with images of martial law. Time. Proclamation number 1081, placing the entire Philippines under martial law. Buhay na huwaran, buhay na ilalay sa bayan